Hi you guys, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker and today I'm very excited to be starting a new series here on the channel where we will be talking about and spotlighting dyers that I purchase from, work yarn through. Uh, we'll probably pick up some people that, you know, make other items that are in our sphere of craftdom. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance. So this is probably my 14th attempt today in the last six hours of trying to film this. I've been trying to film this video since 8 a.m. It is now 3 p.m. Um, I have been interrupted by six members of my family at least. And um, I really want to work with what I got. So I I'm going to push through here. I'm going to apologize in advance to Maddie that I wish this were a little bit more succinct, refined, but I really want to work with what I got and I really want to get this filming done so I can go downstairs, smash this up on a video real quick and get it uploaded because I want to share with you guys before I start working with it and I really want to spotlight Maddie because we have a very funny shipping story to go along with it. So a couple weeks ago, June 6th is when this was supposed to have been shipped out. Um, I'm not sure if I ordered on the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, when, but I ordered this at the beginning of the month. Um, we're now the Tuesday after Father's Day 2024, so it's been a couple of weeks since I ordered this. Um, as you saw on the thumbnail and as you can see in the description box, Dyer uh, Spotlight, this is Moose and Merino. She is a dyer based out of North Pole, Alaska. She is stationed there with the Army. I discovered her through Kay the Crazy Sock Lady because she is working with Sweet Liberty to make a pair of socks right now. And I kind of fell in love with what she was showing. So I went to go check it out for myself and ended up going ahead and buying it. But while I was there, I also happened to find sugar and spice and everything nice and just kind of had to have it. Uh, if you are familiar with my channel and you are not new here, you will be very much well aware of my obsession with pink, purple, and aqua. And this shade of green has been following me around recently, and I kind of need more of this green too. So, uh, yeah, she came home with me too. But uh, Maddie sent this out very, very quickly. Uh, this was instantly sent out after I ordered it. However, it... Got through the regional processing in Columbia, came to my Irmo post office, then it got sent to the other side of the county, to a rural post office. And the tracking kept saying, delivered Blythewood, delivered in Blythewood, delivered in Blythewood. Like if I checked at 6 a.m., it would say it was delivered. If I checked it at noon, it would say it's still at the Blythewood post office. So finally it started moving again, and when I checked at noon, it said it was at the regional post office in Columbia, and then the next day it was finally delivered. Uh, the I did not get an update that it was delivered again until the day until this morning, but it was delivered yesterday morning, and it was in tatters. So I had to reach out to her to let her know I did in fact get my purchase. The outer packaging bag looked like coyotes had been playing kickball with it for the last week while it was in Blythewood, and the outer packaging was absolutely demolished. But I did get my two skeins of yarn, and they were fine. Maddie had them packaged in a separate bag, and where they had taped the outer packaging back together, these were still safe and secure on the inside. There's no stink, no funk, no muss. No, nothing got dirty, nothing got messed up. My yarn was intact. But I did want to let her know because Etsy had already reached out once to see if it had gotten here. And because she had, you know, when you send things, it automatically tells Etsy, you know, oh, I shipped this and then it doesn't get there. The tracking's being slow and they're wanting to know what's going on. They want to get ahead of things. Anyway, I have it. It is in my hands, but I did have to reach out to her. So I was like, you know, this is a perfect opportunity. I've been kicking around this idea of highlighting and spotlighting dyers. What do you want to share with my subscribers about yourself? So she did say she is stationed in North Pole, Alaska with the Army. She is a knitter and crocheter. And she said she's only been dyeing yarn for about a year, which 
I'm hoping she's watching this video because I would like some clarification in the comment section down below from her. But <laughs> have you only been dying for a year or have you only been selling your yarn for a year? Because the technique that's being used with some of these yarns is not beginner ideas. Um, they're not hard techniques. Most dyeing techniques are not difficult per se, but they're difficult to apply in the right way to get an attractive, aesthetically pleasing combination sometimes. And, um, you know, she's got excellent speckling. I love the color wash technique. Um, uh, with this one in particular, you can see there's a lot of heavy color washing with speckling. Uh, but we still have a lot of the berry yarn still showing, whereas with sugar and spice and everything nice, we have blending of color, you know, warm tone to cool tone, as well as we have hypersaturated colors, as well as washes of colors that are blending throughout the hank. So it's not, you know, oh, this is saturated and it bled out. This is kind of intentional color placement. It's not an unintentional technique. Um, also, I spotted this guy. I'm hoping I got a picture of it to show here uh, that just showed up on her Etsy site this morning. Well, I just saw it this morning, but I'm kind of in love and might need to order that next time I place an order. Um, yeah, so I'm surprised to find out she says she's only been dying for a year because I'm very impressed with the technique she's using and the adventurous color usage. I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, if, if, you've, if you're a frequent flyer here on my channel, you will know my obsession with color. I love saturated color. I love pastel color. I love washes of color. I love hints of color. I enjoy color. And I love tactile color. And these both, you know, once again, just scream, touch me, touch me, touch me. I need to be made into something. So, <laughs> I know, I'm a little bit spazzy. Like I said, I've been interrupted a number of times trying to film this video. And I'm trying to say everything I want to say so I can hurry up and get this edited so I can upload it today, Tuesday, because I want to share with you guys so I can crack into this and start doing something. Not that I need to start another pair of socks, but I kind of want to have this available to start another pair of socks ASAP. Um, yeah, so this is Musa Marina. And can I just say this may be like the cutest logo ever? Have you considered like seeing if you can find somebody who can make like squishies or stickers or just saying? I mean, he's kind of adorable. He would make an adorable little plushie. Just say. <laughs> I want to cute aggress your, your logo there. Um, but yeah, so I'm very, very excited to be introducing you guys to Maddie and her yarns. And I really want to do this more often instead of just doing an unboxing where I'm sharing purchases that I make for my own purchase purposes, I really want to spotlight the makers behind these things a little bit more because their stories are really awesome. I mean, just like we're, as we share as crafters who are making with these supplies, this is an art form in and of itself. And knowing where the inspiration comes from, from these things. So I'm very, very excited. I cannot wait to get cracked on with this. Thank you so much. I promise as this series goes on, we will have a little bit more form to it. There'll be a little bit more togetherness for this, but how this day is going, you guys, it's, <laughs> and I really, really, really want to just get my winder out and get this caked up, if not tonight, then tomorrow morning, so. I wanted to share and I apologize to Maddie that I, as the first, as the first share, first share time here for a, a dire spotlight, unfortunately she's getting a little, but I can't wait. 
Her link is in the description box down below. Definitely go check her out. She's got some amazing different things. Once again, we've got different styles, different colors, different things to play with, a little something for everybody. I love you guys. I cannot wait to see you guys again. Please let me know if you stopped by her shop, what did you pick up? What is speaking to you? What, what, what do you see in the yarn? I am a crafter that sees the yarn and decides what it's going to be turned into. So what do you see when you look at her yarns? Because I'm just saying this might need to go into another multicolor shawl like I did with the Summer Freshness shawl. Maybe we have another Summer Freshness shawl coming. I don't know. I love you guys. I look forward to seeing you real soon. One more thing. So she says she's a knitter and a crocheter. Important fact to point out. Observation bias only. When a dyer is also a crocheter, because I know a number of my subscribers are crochet only. When a dyer is also a crocheter, somewhere in the back of their mind, that is a present thing. And they tend to dye yarns that are very crochet accessible as well. I'm just putting it out there. Um, I would definitely say both of these are 100% crochet accessible. These would crochet very nicely. The colors would span out and spread out. You're not going to get like the, the, the awkward clump of color with these. So just something, you know specific to my subscriber base to be aware of as she is a also a fellow crocheter i would imagine most of her yarns will also be crochet accessible hand dyed yarns just a little thing to keep in mind i love you guys i will see y'all on thursday with a show and tell please take care of yourselves bye you guys